cancel culture along with virtue signaling probably came off the internet and into our lives at some stage. And I think it's part of the larger problem of people no longer making arguments that are supposed to hold logically, regardless of the origins of the speaking voice. It's a kind of shoot the messenger version of listening to people. In other words, before an argument is valid, you are asking the question whether somebody is allowed to say something at all, uh, perhaps because of something completely disconnected from it. And also, it's a way in the arts of deciding that because the person who is speaking is not completely pure in the eyes of the person um, doing the cancelling, or doing the virtue signaling, to use some more of the terminology of our times, that they are not entitled to speak. Um, I think it's part of the larger problem of not being able to listen to an argument uh, on its own terms, regardless of whether the person making the argument has a pure um, and... Um, incontrovertible, honorable past, which I think is, in the most situations, irrelevant for the success or failure of the argument. And, of course, cancel culture has been seized upon by conservatives to show that they are being unfairly attacked, which uh, in some cases is not the case, and in some cases is the case of... Um, their opponents refusing to listen to a counter-argument because it comes from a tainted source. But, I mean, if we don't get beyond ad hominem formulations, then uh, we're at a stage where um, what you have between your legs or you choose to put there becomes the basis of your right to speak about issues related to gender equality altogether, um, to give you a hypothetical example. And we don't actually listen to the details of an argument before we've already caricatured it, or in some cases refused to look at it at all. And I suppose that's what is meant by the term cancel culture. But then I might be historicizing this a little too much. <clears throat> 